Hi, this is Carrie Hummingbird, and this is Soul Nectar, that show that attempts to talk about the impossible to talk about in some ways, that essence connection. How do you connect into what you define as essence for you and that greater connection to that which is bigger than you that gives you that sense of who you really are underneath the mask you're wearing? And today, I'm so delighted to have Ava Charlotte on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Carrie, and everyone listening. I'm so excited to be here. This is awesome. So a little bit about Ava. She is an acclaimed facilitator of transformation, inspiring deep and lasting change through her presence, wisdom, and ability to allow existence itself to flow through her. Uh, for more than 25 years, she has been working worldwide with individuals, groups, and corporations, mentoring, giving talks, holding seminars, leading journeys, and holding space for transformation to occur. And actually, her name means the giver of life offers a reflection for you to set yourself free. I love that. Um, <laughs> it's so great. Um, Such a coincidence. <laughs> it's amazing, right? It's like, that's what you're doing with your life. How amazing. Uh -huh. Uh, and, you know, just a side note, you know, or actually deeper onto that is that for more than 25 years, Ava has studied and taught with healers, shamans, and masters from many different traditions. Among these masters was Don Miguel Ruiz, who's the author of The Four Agreements. And, you know, that book set me free, set me free. And so anything to do with The Four Agreements, I, I get lit up and excited and like, <laughs> let's dive in and find out more. So when I, when, I, when I asked David to come on the show and she said, yes, I was so excited. Yay. We're going to do good stuff today. <laughs> so I wanted to start by asking you the question I ask everyone is, you know, how would you define or how would you talk about even your connection to essence? And then, you know, share a story with us because we learn from stories the best, I think. So tell us a story about how you got connected to your essence place. I would love to hear about this. Okay. Well, in a way it was, of course, always there. It's, that's true for all of us. And we all have moments where it's just flickers up and we feel it and then it's gone again and I grew up with that of course just like everyone I do feel in a way I always felt different I always felt I could see and feel and interpret things very differently from others so it was always present but I was wanting to be part of the world and belong and fit in and all that so I, you know I pushed it away and pretty much forgot about it until one day, <laughs> uh, back then I used to skydive for fun. I can see now that that was so much part of my journey and, and how it's, it made me practice being in the present moment. It made me face fear and, and move forward without being afraid of being afraid. It was so much that I was learning through my skydiving. And I had done about 100 jumps this particular day. It could be a really long story. So if I make it short, I did a normal jump, but it didn't end normal. I had to pull my reserve and the reserve broke. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. And if you have your reserve out, you can't pull your main chute. So you're pretty much a goner if you don't have a functioning reserve parachute and as I'm falling to the ground literally falling to my death there is there's nothing but fear in my being guy I, I was 30 at the time and I had experienced moments in my life where I would be afraid or like really tense but it was nothing like this where the body knows it's dying it's that there's an all-consuming fear Mm. and I don't know how many seconds that went, went on. It felt like an eternity, but there's only seconds to the ground, so it can have been. And then the most astonishing thing happened. From this excruciating fear, everything just changed into something I don't, I don't even have words for it, Carrie. I've tried so many times over the years. I could cry, yeah. <laughs> the closest I can come to is grace. Um, yeah acceptance is another word it makes more like sense for the mind but i never made a choice to accept my situation it's, it's something just happened within me and 
the fear was gone and I was in complete acceptance in, in a moment of grace. And, and it wasn't a blissful feeling at all. It was beyond feeling. There were no feelings mm -hmm. and there were no thoughts. There was an all encompassing knowing that I was fine. And that has nothing to do, had nothing to do with me knowing I would survive, which obviously I did. I was fine. Even if my body smashed into the ground and became mush, I was fine. So my identification shifted from this human form that I call Eva to that which I truly am. I got to experience that as an adult with my conscious awareness, and it was exquisite. <sighs> It was absolutely amazing. And I was still conscious, conscious in my human form in the way that I could see the problem. I was trying to fix the problem, but not from any, oh my God, I need to do something. I was completely calm, completely detached and completely present, doing what I needed to do. And I smashed into the ground and I survived. That's, again, it's a long story, but somehow... I had no injuries, like nothing. They kept me in the hospital for five days and they couldn't fi find anything wrong with me. That's nothing. incredible. But there's more to the story. Uh. In the plane on the way up, I'd done a hundred jumps. I was beyond uh, being afraid and all that. And, but there's still a, the body knows it's going to be thrown out of an airplane. So there's adrenaline present, not from fear, but just an alertness and need to stay on top of this. And there's this, it's an incredible feeling. It's part of why it's so fun to skydive because it really brings you to be present and alert and awake. But this particular time, I got the spot in the airplane where you can't communicate with others. There's no door, it's loud, it's windy. And I was next to the pilot who has his headset on. So I was just closing my eyes and for whatever reason, it was like I fell asleep, had a dream, a vision. For me, it was a vision. And I was someplace else, not in the plane, in my experience. And in this vision, I was skydiving. And I had to pull my reserve in the vision, and the reserve broke, just like what later happened in the jump. Hmm. And I... Language is linear, so I have to tell the story linearly, but my experience wasn't linear. It was more of a hologram, like an all-knowing moment. So in, in this vision in the plane, I knew I'm falling to my death. I have to make a choice now. Not in five minutes, five days, five months, five years. No procrastination here. Choose now. Do you want to live or die? And... Background to that story is if you had asked him on the ground, I would have said, take me out of here. I lived a great life. I was successful making money. I had a great boyfriend. Life was great looking from outside in. But internally, I was miserable. I couldn't find a place to fit in the world and nothing makes sense. And I just left what am I doing here? Like, take me home. I want to go home. And I had carried that wish. I can see that now that I had carried that wish to go home for so long and life brought it to me. Okay. You say you want to go home. Here's your opportunity. Make a choice. And when I was posed with that choice, it became so obvious to me. Wow. I do want to live. It was crystal clear. Well, of course I want to live. What stupid question is that? And it wasn't out of fear of death as I was falling to my death. It was love for life. So, oh my God, I'm, I love being alive, having a body, being in the world. And I'm not taking advantage of it. I'm not doing what, what I'm here to do. I'm like, whoa. I could see my whole life in one moment of how I, I was victimizing myself and feeling I had no power. and and. Again, I was living a great life, making great stuff in the world, but no, that was not my, uh, my internal experience. And I definitely wasn't stepping into my power, really making a difference. 
And I saw all that and I made a choice in a way I had never made a choice before, Carrie. With all of my power, all of my being, everything in me was aligned with, yes, this is what I want. It's not maybe it is that old, you know, all the voices we carry, you know, this was 100%, yes, I want to live. I want to live. And I added this little uh, sub line to my choice because I knew I was falling to my death in this skydiving accident. And the only way to possibly survive that is with a very broken body. So I added, and I want to have a whole healthy, strong body. And someplace along here in, in uh, my dream vision, my rational mind caught up with me. And here I am in a plane and my rational mind is telling me, what on earth are you doing? This is bullshit, excuse my language. And I just pushed it out of my mind. Pushed the whole vision. It's like, you can't think like that. You're in a plane. You're going to jump out of an airplane. And in a way, that's correct. You need to focus on what you're about to do. It could potentially be dangerous if you're not paying attention. So I pushed it out of my mind and focused on skydiving. And as I've already shared, what I had dreamt is exactly what happened. But because I had seen it before, the impact of what happened was so profound for me. Not only did I get to experience the essence of what we all truly are, which was profound in itself, but I also got to make a choice and see how life responded accordingly with the ultimate choice, life or death. Like, whoa, I have that kind of power. I can do that. I could never again in my life say, oh, I have no power. I, I'm a victim here. God knows I tried. I still do at times. <laughs> it's so handy sometimes. <laughs> I know it is, isn't it? But I know it's not true. Yeah. Because I'd made that choice. And I got to see how, how this knowing was there in me and how my rational mind came in and took over. Mm. There were so many things that I realized it just that one little thing and it changed my life. And nothing changed around me, nothing. But I had changed and I saw everything differently. And my whole life became about returning to this peace, grace, if I can be falling to my death and be at peace, how could I let anything in the world ever bother me again? And it did. So, you know, it was a journey. Well, because we forget and then we have to remind ourselves. I, that's what I find is that my, I forget, I get those moments of clarity and then I like forget it. You know, I get into the trees. I like to talk about like trees or forests and I get into the trees and then I'm all in fear again. I'm like, okay, wait, let's go back to the forest you know, and see this. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. I think a yeah. lot of people right now are, are feel in that place of fear, you know, because we're really in the trees right now. We're really in the trees in terms of everything going on, especially in the United States. Um, yeah. There's a lot of fear. And yeah. it causes us, you know, talk a little bit about, um, cause you have such amazing training. <laughs> I mean, talk a little bit about I'm so your, blessed. <laughs> you are so blessed. Okay. Talk, tell some of that because maybe people don't really understand what this is all about. I mean, I think that just the ability to separate your small self, your ego self, the person you are, the Ava Charlotte that you are in this lifetime from the bigger you, that's okay. That's eternal. That's not going anywhere to, to just be able to separate those two things out and have awareness that those two things exist at the same time is profound. And, and then to realize the perceptual filters, you know, that, that we can put out things when fear comes in the picture, I would just love for you to, you've got, tell us about a little bit more about your training, how you got started with that, what, what it's looked like, cause it's going to make a big difference. I think. Gosh, that's such a big question. I know, right? You're going to start. <laughs> um, just having the awareness that we are more than this human being, that's, of course, profound and a great starting point. But it's a big difference knowing it and living it. At least that's my experience. Mm. And that's something that's constantly deepening in my own being. 
constantly. Um, I guess how it was for me is that somehow I always felt trapped. And I didn't understand how because I wasn't, you know, grew up in Sweden. It's a free country. Was like nothing was trapping me. And I lived a good life and had everything. When I was 21, I had everything I had ever been told I needed to be happy. But I was miserable. And I didn't understand why. And I searched outside of myself for maybe 10 years, changing jobs, changing boyfriend, going to another country, like all those external things. And they all helped a little bit, and then it was the same again. Mm. And it, it really wasn't until this guy died in an accident that I realized, well, I'm looking in the wrong place. I need to look inside. And as my intent changed, life was, would bring me other things. So now the, the teachers that are, were more aware spiritually, they would show up. And one would come into my life, and, and I would work with, that particular teacher for a couple of years. And then as I had learned everything I could from him or her, that person would go away and someone else would show up. But that's kind of how my journey has been. And there's been so many teachers along the way with, from all kinds of traditions and meditation and yoga and all kinds of body work and from different cultures, Russia and India and South America and, Eastern Europe and Western people, there's so, so, so many. And as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. And that's true on every level, I feel. And I had reached a point maybe 10 years after the skydiving accident where this feeling of being trapped was so profound. At the time of the skydiving accident, I was miserable. Now, 10 years later, I'm, I'm happy. Everything has changed. I live a good life externally and internally. And, and yet there's this profound feeling of being trapped. And, and the way I would describe it was that I felt I was in a bubble. And my bubble had been hell. Now I was heaven. But it's still a bubble. Mm. Right? It's like I knew there's something outside of this bubble, but how do I get there? And through different um, teachers and practices, I became aware that, oh my God, I am the bubble. It was actually through a series of Vipassana retreats that I shifted that and realized, whoa, I'm the one trapping me. And how can I, how can, how can I get beyond trapping myself because you can't really see yourself like we all know you can you can't see your eyes if you're not if you don't have a mirror to look in and I had I had been to so many teachers and they would all take me well some some would be able to take me to the edge of the bubble but I had never met anyone who could take me beyond the bubble even though the practices are um, the tools would be able to take me there, like meditation and yoga, they can all take you there, but I had never had anyone that could guide me how to do that, and I hadn't been able to do it on my own. So I decided to set out on, on a journey around the world trip. I was going to be gone a year on my own, one woman, one, woman, one backpack, and you can buy these round-the-world tickets. You have to go one direction around the world. So I... I actually didn't start that way. I have to back up. It started with me reading a book by Don Miguel called Beyond Fear. It's about his work. It's not written by him, but about him. And it describes his work in, in the pyramids, Teotihuacan, outside Mexico City. And I just had this knowing I have to go to these pyramids. And I would like to meet the author. So I went to his webpage, and he wasn't anywhere present on his webpage. It was his boys. And I didn't know anything about him except that he had written the four agreements. So I did not know that he had had a heart attack and it wasn't really working. I had no clue. He was just not available. So I let go of that and decided to go with one of his apprentices. So I set up to go to Teotihuacan with one of his apprentices. And it was fascinating, Carrie. You know when you 
when you make it the choice about something and it takes on a life of its own, it was just like that. I was just going to go to Mexico. But then I thought, well, if I'm going to go all the way to Mexico and it was kind of expensive, why don't I just make a round the world trip out of it? And that's kind of how that idea got. So I bought a ticket round the world, made all the plans, and then, hmm, I'm going to be gone a year. Should I really keep my car and pay all that? I'll just sell my car. So one thing, I never made a choice to pack up my life. Never made that conscious choice. But that's what I ended up doing. Mm. Got rid of my car, my apartment, my stuff, closed down my two companies without ever, ever reflecting on, wow, I'm closing down my life. I might not be coming back. I was thinking, well, when I come back, when, because that wasn't a question, when I come back, I'll, I don't want to, step back into my own life. So it's natural that I get rid of everything. And I set out on this round the world trip alone with my backpack. And my first stop ended up being a, a power journey to Teotihuacan. But because this arrangements now had taken longer than I had planned, I missed the trip with the apprentice I had planned to go with. And I went, just pick the next journey available. And it happened to be with one of Miguel's sons. And it blew my mind away. And the most important thing was meeting Miguel's son. It was Jose. And recognizing in his eyes, I could recognize what I had experienced in the skydiving accident. Mm. That, that presence was there. It came and it went, but... When I was there, wow, that's exactly what I'm looking for, but not in someone else, in me. And one thing led to the other it was a strange journey. Somehow I, life just brought me, coincidentally, I met pretty much everyone in Miguel's family except him over the course of three, four months. And I'm still thinking I'm going on my round the world trip. And I'm running a little late for my next stop. And with Swedish, North European, very organized, stick to the plan. Yeah. <laughs> but I had this urge to go back to the pyramids one more time. So I did. And the, the hotel I was staying at was packed with people. I was the only one there that didn't belong. And one of them came and, and got me and said, come on, come join us. And let me introduce you to our leader and that was Miguel and the most powerful thing of, of that meeting was just seeing him and I knew whoa he is beyond the bubble oh my god he's beyond the bubble it was so clear and at that point that was the first person I had ever met that was beyond the bubble and making this a long story already long story shorter he said you're now my apprentice you should come to vegas where he lived at the time round the world trip fully paid for used to be a really scary apprenticeship gotta go here so i never went around the world i did in a different way internally and eventually externally with him but that's kind of how i came to meet one of the most profound teachers I've ever been with. And that was the beginning of a completely different story, 10 years of constant reflection, because that's exactly how he showed up for me, being the mirror. Mm. And it was very, very strange, Carrie, in the beginning. Very strange. I would be who, who I was, and I was so used to when I showed up being me, I knew what would come back. Because people respond to you and, and people in general, I'm generalizing, but people in general had always responded a particular way. If I show up this way, they will respond that way. If I show up this way, they will respond that way. None of that worked with Miguel. None of it. So something else would come back and whoa. <laughs> and, and instinctively, I just knew it's not about him, it's about me. So what am I doing? Why am I getting that reflection? 
And why am I getting that reflection? Wait. It was very strange, but so profound. Mm. Eventually, I ended up living with him. So I had that reflection 24-7, which is such an amazing gift. But not necessarily easy. Extremely I vulnerable. Yeah. I got to see me, the good, the bad, and the mm-hmm. ugly. Mm-hmm. And learn how to then make a choice. Do I really want to keep that aspect of me? Because we were talking earlier about, like you say, we forget what we truly are. And yes, we do. But it's, it's also that we carry all these imprints. Layers of stories that have been told through our, through our lives the way i'd like to to describe it is when we come into this world as newborn babies the mind isn't um, evolved yet we have a brain but we don't really have a mind mm. so life can move freely through this human baby yes we carry imprints in our dna from ancestors and Yes, we carry imprints from our time in the womb with our mom and all that. But compared to the the way we are as adults, the human baby is really free. Life expresses itself freely. A child is curious and happy and inspired and, and there's so much energy. And when something hurts, they cry. And when the moment is gone, they're happy again. They don't carry it. Carry it. Whatever comes up in the moment, is expressed and then they go on to the next moment. And over time, we're told by our parents that um, you're a boy or a girl, you're good when you do this, you're bad when you do that. My parents called me Ava and it's just a name, it's a label. It does not mean anything to the child. The child learns just like a dog or a cat to listen to that particular sound. When my parents say, Ava, they want me to listen, to pay attention. But it doesn't mean anything. None of those labels, boy, girl, good, bad, none of that means anything to the child in the beginning. But over time, by all these imprints from our surroundings, from our family or siblings and friends and school and teachers and TV, like everything around us, We build this virtual reality Mm. of labels, stories, concepts. And I call this virtual reality Ava Charlotte. And at some point in the child's evolution, identification starts. So now I say, I am Ava. I am a girl. I'm good when I do this. I'm bad when I do that. And I try to conform with all these beliefs. And at some point, Ava Charlotte is running the show. I'm not. And I'm still here. That which I truly am is still here, but I don't care because everything is fine. So if Ava Charlotte wants to run the show, go ahead. It doesn't matter to me. So for me, what I experienced in that moment in the skydiving accident was returning to me and then bam into the ground and I made my Charlotte again and how do I get back to me and that was a long journey of peeling of layers and it didn't just happen like that it does in moments like we all we all have awakening moments but to actually be able to live it didn't happen overnight that was hard work it took a lot of courage a lot of digging deep in myself a lot of ruthless looking into myself and a lot through the ruthless love of of miguel that he was so like nothing nothing would get by him anything where i would arise in resistance or fear or anger or anything like that it completes reflection right back at me it was amazing and I think a lot easy. of people don't realize like what a gift that is when someone is willing to love you so much to tell you the truth, like to, sh- to yeah. let you see that, not even tell you, but just to let you witness it by mm-hmm. holding space for you to see yeah. yourself. It's profound. It's such a gift. 
Yeah, but you have to be willing to see it. The teacher can reflect it back to you, but if you're not willing to look at it, nothing will change. We but have I, to do that work ourselves. I feel, you know, my journey has, you know, been very fast and hard <laughs> with all this. And I'm, and I'm working my way through it. And um, the thing I notice is that when I get to the edge of the bubble, what happens for me is some fear that I'm going to somehow be lost. Like if mm -hmm. I go outside the bubble, then I'm going to be lost. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to exist anymore somehow. Which is true. And, you know, then what? You know, then, then if I peel that mask off, when I look in the mirror, do I see myself or do I see someone else or what happens? You know, it's like this moment of fear, like, will I just cease to, will I just poof, you know, poof into the air? I mean, all these fear-based thoughts come up and I, you know, I just witness them and just go, wow, that's a lot of fear for such a reward, you know, because anytime I have pushed through, the other side is so beautiful when I'm not trying to control everything. When I'm not trying to, in, you know, find my place to sing, for example, in the group, if I'm just relaxing and letting it go and then letting it flow through me, this beautiful moment happens that's so expansive and delightful and, and I'm not even doing it. Something else is doing it and I get to experience it. Yeah. So, so it's hard for us to, I think, let go of our attachments. <laughs> I think something that, that's often gets confusing in the spiritual transformational world is that we talk about I do this and I do that and I feel and I, 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 but who is talking? Mm. So when, when you say I get to the edge of the bubble and then I'm afraid that I will be lost to disappear. That's, that's my virtual, ego. It's virtual reality. carry talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not you talking. Mm -hmm. the, you can never be lost, but virtual reality carry will disappear yes. outside a bubble because you're not real. You're just a, an energetic form made up of stories and beliefs. You're not even real. You did not exist when that human being came into this world. You're not real. Oh, thank you for that. I can feel that. So as long as you're identifi identified with Carrie, you will always feel that way, but if the identification can shift with you, everything changes. Yes. That is, that's so profound. I'm having one of those profound moments right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that other people can see the trail on that one. That's really great. You know, and I think that in order for us to... come to peace, you know, because we're experiencing a lot of what I would just want to, without empowering it, I would just say it's not peace <laughs> entirely, um, is, is really coming to this perspective that what you believe to be true might not really be true. Like it's part of your virtual self that you've adopted through all the experiences you ever had and the judgments you made about it. Exactly. Like, for example, like I notice in myself, I will get very, and this is my virtual self, will get really upset anytime anybody talks about, you know, disempowering women. Like that just immediately, I'm like, Rrr, you know, I've mm -hmm. got this reaction. Yeah. And that's, and I know that's because of my mother who was very strident and not going to let anybody tell her what to do. And so, and would just rant to get on her soapbox, you know, my whole life. I was like, <laughs> I love my mother, but she, she's very passionate, you know? And so in many ways, my virtual self is definitely a lot like my mother because I, I just instinctively get those, you know, reactive. I want to push back. Um, but I think have, that's an awareness a lot of people don't necessarily have, is what I'm trying to exactly. say. Exactly. You have awareness, which makes a huge difference. I but think if we could cultivate more awareness, maybe we could get through some of these clashes in perspective that are happening, that are clashes in perspective between virtual selves, as you had defined it, I think. 
exactly. And everyone lives in, in their own bubble, so to speak, a bubble made out of, of all, all the imprints, all the experiences, everything that's ever happened to us. It's carried in our, in, in our body, in our emotional body, in, in our mind. And if there is no awareness, we are acting on the past all the time. We're reliving the past because that's what's running the show. The virtual reality is really just a collection of past experiences. And that could be an experience of, of being empowered and working for peace, or it could be being a victim and even being in jail. It doesn't matter. It's just, one is not more real than the other. They're all unreal. They're all just virtual realities running around. But beyond that, beyond that bubble is the essence of our being. And every human being, in, in my experience and point of view, wants the same thing. We all want to feel good. We all want to make sure we and our loved ones are safe. We have our needs met. We can live a free, inspired productive life we all want the same thing but because of the culture we grew up with our parents society whatever beliefs we were fed with we have a different story of how to make that happen yes but they're not better or worse they're just different stories we all want the same thing so if, and I for me that was always clear even as a child I could see that and I never understood what they, what, why can't you just talk because <laughs> you want the same thing but the world is not like that yet because we don't have awareness mm. and rising up in my bubble in in agitation and and resistance and anger or, or even passion it's not necessarily a good thing if I don't have awareness. Even if it's for a good cause, it all, for me, it depends on where am I coming from within, my, within myself. Um, there's such a big difference between feeling anger and being angry. They're not the same thing. Explain and, the difference. Explain the difference for people. So if you can. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, As a human being, I am always perceiving what's going on around me. My body perceives, my emotional and mental aspects are always perceiving what's going on. And this human form, body, mind, emotion, is really a, a collection of past experiences. So I will respond to what's around me based on my human instincts and my personal past experiences. So if something is happening in my life, I, uh, the car is about to hit me and I have been hit by a car. So a car is about to hit me, my body will respond with fear. It's absolutely natural. It's natural for the human instinct. There's imminent danger and it's natural for my personal past experiences because I have been hit by a car. So it's a double fear. And fear will arise in me. I'm feeling fear. Mm -hmm. Which is completely natural. All emotions are natural for, for us as human beings living a, a human life. But I have a choice. When this fear is arising within me, I can recognize with awareness, oh, fear, I'm feeling fear. Is there anything to be afraid of? Yes, a car is about to hit me. Well, get out of the way. Or I'm feeling fear because that person that I'm not sure about for some unknown reason that doesn't even make sense in my mind, I'm feeling fear. Is there any danger? No. Okay. Then I don't have to become afraid. Mm. The, when... I, when the fear is arising within me, if I'm believing in that feeling, I'm feeling afraid, therefore there must be something to be afraid of. So now I am afraid. You see the difference? It goes from feeling to 
being when I start identifying with the feeling. And thinking, you use the I am. Yeah. You think this is real. I make that part of me. Energetically, we're all energetic beings. Let me explain it in a different way. We're all energetic beings. Everything is energy. So when the, the emotion of fear is arising within me, it's like a wave moving through water. If, if I'm afraid of being afraid or if, if I identify with that emotion, I hold on to that energy and it stays in me. Mm -hmm. And then my being holds the energetic vibration of fear. And that might be too much for, for my human being to live with, so I turn it into anger. Mm. That's easier to handle. It's a little less intense than fear. So then I become angry and I retaliate with anger. Yes. Because I am believing in, in, in all this stuff that's moving through my energetic being. I think it's me. I identify with it. Does that make sense? It does. And I think that people also wrap a story around the feeling. Well, of course. <laughs> when something happens outside and you don't necessarily understand it, or even if you think you understand it, you, you interpret. Mm -hmm. Which is natural. We're storytellers. As, as this human beings that we are we're storytellers we have a brain that wants to tell a story it's completely natural so an event happens my human perceives it and the brain the mind interprets it but the interpretation is based on my past mm -hmm. that's all i have to reference with it's all, the past is only reference and i use it to interpret what's happening now and then i relive continue in the same path because that's how I interpret things. But if you can separate yourself, not believing so much in yourself, like all this stuff can be arising and it's okay. It's, it's just my human form feeling fear for some reason, but I am not afraid. Mm. My human being might be afraid. I'm not. Like separate those two. They're not the same. Mm. The human will always respond to the world based on the past. I don't need to. I can have a choice. So if I, if I walk into a grocery store, I'm happy, I'm inspired. It's a Saturday, I feel free, and it's a beautiful day. I walk into the grocery store, and there's this drama unfolding right in front of me and this couple they're screaming at each other and their child is having a tantrum and they're beating the child and there's all this drama going on and my my energetic being my human will react and every human being will react different differently because they have different pasts mm. so maybe in me um i will feel a sense of helplessness and what can I do and guilt because I'm not helping the child and I have all that kind of stuff going on in me. So now I'm feeling all these emotions. And if I'm believing myself, I will become angry, uh, guilty, shameful. And my whole experience of this beautiful day has shifted into something completely different. Mm. And now, because I'm holding anger and guilt and shame in my body, that's the energy that comes out of me. So now I'm part of the problem. I'm feeding the dramatic situation. I'm not helping. Mm. Even though I want to help, and my whole, how can I help? How can I help? <coughs> but my energy is anger, guilt, and shame, which is what comes out of me. It feeds the situation. If I, instead, have enough awareness to say, Whoa, all of these emotions are rising up in me. Whew. Take a step back internally and just read or whatever tools you have to realize that's just feelings arising from the past. I don't have to believe in it. I can choose to return to my own peace, my own joy. Whew. Just shift my energy is internally, which is very possible with awareness and, and practice.
practice, now I can be at peace in that situation. What comes out of me is peace. So mm-hmm. even if I don't take any action, I'm still changing the situation. Mm. Okay. I, this is, I'm glad this has gone this way because I was hoping that we would get here. <laughs> we yes. have so much going on in the world. And I know that a lot of my audience, I'm, I'm making the assumption a lot of my audience is going to be people like me who are healers and leaders and want to make a difference in the world. They, you know, we're wanting to be of service and to give back and, you know, to leave it better than we found it. Mm-hmm. We, one of the struggles I personally go through is that I see the things happening, you know, the trees, I see all the trees happening and, and I'm aware enough to know, okay, I've got, that's my personal stuff. I'm getting triggered by that. Let me clear that up before I and look at this again you know, and see if, see if there's anything there for me to shift internally. And I understand that part, but I, I think that some of the people I talk to in this community, they, they want to just kind of do that part and then get back to their own peace. And it's what I'm kind of calling oming on the mountaintop, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm feeling like um, maybe for some people, that's the energy they can hold. Maybe that's, that's, that's what they can provide as their service that they hold that frequency of peace. And so for that, I'm, I feel blessed. At the same time, I do feel there's a need for people who can sort of navigate through the woods and kind of, and, and sort of shine a light really strong and bright to go through these actual little dialogues, you know, even just Facebook dialogues, it seems someplace a lot of people don't want to go, but I'm feeling like even if I can just make one, if I can teach one moment, of myself navigating through something, maybe that awakens some people to go, oh, that's something I might want to do for myself. It's like spreading the awareness of this teaching path or spreading the awareness that we're not our beliefs, you know, that we, that this is a virtual reality and the reaction you're experiencing is from that virtual reality. And can we come from a different place? And I, I'm not, totally skilled enough yet to figure out how to do (laughs) this is the part I'm learning right now so um we all are (laughs) it's you know I'm really working on it and how can I come clear because there is a difference I know the difference in myself when I'm coming from a point of clarity I can come I can it like cuts right through the situation just Mm -hmm. like boom and it's so clear what's happening Yeah, you totally feel the difference. Versus the ucky, I feel like it's ucky energy. The ego energy to me feels icky. It feels like shameful, awkward, not sure of herself, you know, but I'm going to push. It feels pushy, shovey, forcey. Those are words I describe that how it feels in my being when I'm in that space. So I want to, I would love some wisdom from you for other people, light workers like me who feel, I really don't feel I can just go home. I feel like I need to do something. But I, want, I don't want to make it worse. I want to help. I want to, how do I do that? How do I help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the action you want to take, that's going to be very individual, whatever is being called through you, what mm-hmm. action you want to take. What I focus more on is where you're coming from within yourself as you're taking that action. Mm, okay, great. Let's talk about that. Because yes, I, I agree with you. You can sit on a mountaintop and, and ohm and be in complete peace and you're holding space and you're sending out those vibrations in the world. And that's absolutely, that's beautiful. Personally, I feel if you can be that person in the world you can make an even bigger difference Mm. but it's tricky because as you say the ego the virtual reality is always present it's not something we get rid of but we can shift identification from the virtual reality to the essence of our being that's an awakening not everyone is going to be willing to go all the way to do that, at least not quite yet. So what can we do right now? And just having an awareness in everyday moments, where am I coming from here? Am I filled with anger and upset as I'm walking in a 
Women's March? Or am I feeling inspired and happy and peaceful and joyful and yes, things are shifting. Am I feeling good or bad to make it really simple? Yeah. What is the vibration I carry with me as I move through the world? Because that vibration is what really changes things. You can speak beautiful words, but if your vibration is fear, anger, hate, resistance, the, the, the action you're taking is fear, not the beautiful words. It's the energy is what really changes things. So I'm not talking about non-action and accepting injustices and all that stuff. Absolutely no way. But where are you coming from as you take these actions? And one of my, my um, what's the word? Not idols, gurus, none of that. But inspirations, that's a good word. One of my inspirations in this particular case is Nelson Mandela. He was in jail for years. And in the beginning, he was upset, angry, and frustrated, and thinking he would never get out of there. But through that time, he found peace and freedom within himself. That didn't, didn't mean that he just, okay, I can just stay here there in jail because now I'm happy. Just like me falling to my death in the skydiving accident doesn't mean I don't want to survive. I'm at peace with the potential of my future death right here and now. And he, would, and he reached that state in jail, but he never stopped fighting for freedom for himself and his people. And look what he did. But he found peace in himself and he came from that place. Same with Mahatma Gandhi. Nonviolence, peaceful heart, peaceful actions, but constantly, constantly, constantly standing up for this is my truth. This is what I believe in. Where are you coming from? What energies are you holding in your being? And we're not victim of energies. We have complete control over this energetic beings. We have no control over other human beings. So we have complete control with awareness and practice over this human being. It will be um, triggered and affected and imprinted by the world around us. Always, always, always. Life is moving and it's coming in and out of us. But I can choose what I do with that. So you can come at me with... with some opinion about our current situation and be angry and upset and you need to do this or that or what are you thinking and i can respond with the same energy or i can take that in and return peace i don't have to judge what you feel i don't i don't have to make it wrong we'll never make peace by making others wrong and who are others anyway i'm an other to you mm. Everyone is an other to me. Nothing is going to change that way. Mm -hmm. We're all wanting the same thing. So creating internal war is not going to help anything. I have to start here by finding my own peace and then stand up and take the eight action I feel is needed to, to change our world, to, to come with respect for the other side, understanding for... This, we want the same thing. We have just different stories of how we're getting there. How can I meet that person, not fight that person? Mm. Talking, talking from a respectful place, meeting everything with, with peace and love. And it's, of course, that's not going to just magically change everything. Of course not. But he won't change if I'm not there. We'll never create external peace as long as we carry internal war within ourselves. And we do, even with ourselves. We're constantly fighting ourselves. Judging myself, an emotion comes up that I don't like. Why am I feeling this way? Even in spiritual transformational circles, I shouldn't be feeling like that. And I'm spiritual, I shouldn't be angry. <laughs> That's what Heather Ash calls a spiritual judge. <laughs> Yeah, we get the spiritual mm -hmm. judge after a while. Like I should be able to come from love, and I can't right now because I'm so angry. Well, uh -huh. that you know, that's part of the journey too. You know, yeah. that's a big part of the journey is you're getting that mirror reflection so you can see I'm holding this in my virtual reality. I need to clean it up. Mm -hmm. It needs to go within me. It needs to be resolved. 
And then I can show up with love for other people that are in the same, we're all trapped in the spider's web is the way I look at it. You know, we're all trapped in some kind of spider's web, a bunch of stories that we made up or that our ancestors told us. And we got trapped in that story. And there's, like you said, I love that you're talking about the bubble because I've always had that feeling like there's freedom. I can be a butterfly. There's freedom. If I could get off of this web, Mm -hmm. I could be free. But for longest time, I thought personally, I thought being free meant that I would be at peace always. Mm. And now it's completely different. Now it's, it's, loving and respecting my human being, Eva Charlotte, who's had all these experiences and this body and this mind and these emotions are constantly responding to the world around me and emotions are coming up, thoughts are coming up and all this is happening. Like I could be frustrated or angry. No, I should rephrase that. I can feel frustration or anger in my human and still hold a space of peace. Mm. I can be the conscious fields of consciousness around the bubble, just holding that place for myself. It's okay that this human is, is scared at times and she's reacting and all that stuff is coming up. She's had experiences that triggers her. It's okay. She's human. <laughs> I'm not. I can hold that space for my human. I, there is no, Miguel said a sentence to me many, many years ago. This is kind of the way, he, usually he wouldn't talk much. He would teach through reflection, never explain anything. And he said a sentence, honey, I have no conflict with Miguel. And I knew he had given me a diamond and I didn't get it. it. Took me years to get, to really get it. Now I have no conflict with Eva Charlotte. She mm-hmm. can have any emotion and thought arising in her. I don't have to be in conflict with that. I don't have to judge the emotion or the feeling or the thought as wrong or good or bad or should be or should not be. It's arising. I can lovingly hold space for whatever is arising. And it moves through me like waves. It doesn't stick. Which is exactly what I had witnessed in Miguel. He's not calm, peaceful all the time. His human being is reacting. But I would see an event, like something would happen with one of his kids. And he would be like the dad would, the human body, the father would be right there to protect his children or save or respond to or whatever it was. And I could see the, the reaction arise and fall away. He wouldn't hold on to it. I was fascinated by it. So, wow. It just lasts a second. If, and if you're not paying attention and if you're not aware, you wouldn't even notice it because it's so subtle and it goes through him so fast. And I, I would witness that. That was one of the gifts of, of being in training, like living with him is why he does it that way. Because you get to see a master living his life. Mm. And now I get it. Because now I'm experiencing it. Like how, how it could just move through me. Like a wave in the ocean or a cloud in the sky. It just moves. And the only way it could shift from a feeling moving through me to becoming an expression in me is by me grabbing onto it and thinking it's real, identifying with it. I'm feeling angry, so that must mean that I am angry. Now I'm angry. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be that way at all. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean the anger goes away. Well, ultimately, if you definitely sit on mountaintop and just hold to that space, mind and emotion calms down. And absolutely, it's possible to live in the world actively and be full and calm. I'm not like that all the time. But it doesn't mean I can't hold my attention in the field of love and peace to the best of my ability all the time. I don't do that all the time, but I do it to the best of my ability. And that's my practice. That's how I can build bridges, work as a peacemaker in the world. It starts here. 
and when I can stay in that place, inspiration flows through me, and then I have great ideas of what action I can take. And that action is not coming from anger or fear, it's coming from peace and love. It could be the same action, exact same action, but the energetics you send out into the world is completely different. And I realized that early on, I didn't understand it, but I experienced it early in my life when I really wanted to make a difference and I joined big organizations, Amnesty and Greenpeace and all of those, and they do fantastic work in the world, don't take me wrong. But what I experienced felt wrong to me. There was so much anger and fighting and arr, 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 arr. the energy was really uncomfortable. And I didn't want to be part of that. Mm. I didn't understand it though, because well, I want to be part of it because they're doing good work, but it feels so bad. I didn't get it. Now I do. And I don't want to be part of that. Now I could go into an organization like that and hold my own. Absolutely. It's and I think that's part of, fun. that's really, that leads into, you know, what you're actually doing in the world right now. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit about rise in love and, and being a peacemaker and how you're training other people to walk this path yourself. Well, rise in love has really come out of my own journey, my own process of awakening into different steps from becoming aware that, oh my God, I am actually creating this myself and the different steps of how can I change that? How can I take this awareness to actually shift how I show up in the world? And it's a process. And once you come to a level of, of being aware enough and powerful enough within yourself to make a different choice, then you can move into the actual being a peacemaker consciously. We're powerful beyond our wildest imagination as human beings, we, we have the power to generate anything we can imagine we can create. We can generate any state of being. We're not victims to circumstances and I don't have to feel a specific way. I can choose how I wanna feel. So when I, in some situation, feel powerless or victimized and I'm aware of it, I can pull myself into myself and generate a feeling of, confidence and being strong we're not victims so it's a whole process of different steps of doing that um, i chose rise in love because for me it really it's a short way of saying exactly what it is i've been doing for myself again we're energetic beings and the essence of our being can be called love. It encompasses, just like the, the rainbow is all the colors, love is all the energies, all the emotions. Not just the good ones. <laughs> all of them. All, <laughs> all of them. We've talked about that in other broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about embracing all of us mm -hmm. and coming to the awareness that I am this force of energy that we call love and it's not into love or with love or to love because that would that would, would implicate a separation and it's not something we're lacking it's what we are so it's becoming more aware of rising within what we already are becoming what we already are not that it's ever lost but being aware of it that's the process it's aligning all of all of our different pieces, all of our different energies with the essence of our being, with ex existence itself. And from that place, stepping out into the world and bringing peace through me. Like that example I gave in the, in the grocery store where you can choose, how do I respond to my own reactions to this drama? Mm. And choosing something else. I love it's that. I love that. This is fabulous. And you had a free offer. I think you're actually, tell us about your free offer. I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to invite 
anyone and everyone who's interested to just have a informal informal conversation in any way shape or form of how we can collaborate to bring peace into the, this world through you through me through collaborations so i'm going to put it up on my webpage www.avacharlotte.com where you can sign up for a conversation and let's see what can unfold i would love to speak with you i love that I really enjoyed this conversation, Ava. It's just like so beautiful. And your wisdom is very helpful in these times. It's a really good thing you took that journey. Oh my God. So grateful. It's a really good thing. And yeah. you know, I'm grateful that you did it. I'm grateful that you did it because now you can be of such great service to so many people who are just starting out or on the middle of that journey and need some guidance and some mentoring through the process. Yeah, well, it's, we're always in service to each other. So I'm learning, you're learning. Let's do yay. it together. Yay, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, and I always end my calls with kisses. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna get let's everybody, do it. let's do it. Okay. <sighs> yay, love, love, love. Until so next time, love. thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. That was a beautiful discussion, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.